Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital spoilers for Tuesday, April 9, state that Jason Morgan summoned Diane Miller to Corinto's Coffee, where he took over Sonny Corinto's office and pointed her that he still controlled half of the company. When the conversation shifted to Jason's estate, Diane mused on how quickly she could obtain a death certificate for him. Diane assumed that someone behind the scenes intended this to happen. However, Jason's estate was in probate while he was away, so Diane believed he would be able to recover possession of everything rather simply. Jason inquired about Carly Spencer's life changes, so Diane told that her marriage to Sonny had ended, claiming that he had chosen Nana Corinthos instead. Diane also blamed Nana for taking over the Metro court after Carly lost it due to a bad investment. When Diane revealed the insider trading scenario, she also stated that Drew Kane was imprisoned and Carly was fined $5 million. Diane blamed Nana for disclosing that SEC infractions and said that Carly was attempting to restore her life through her work at Bodies. Jason agreed with Diane's assessment of Carly's resilience. Although her paralegal was meant to bring some paperwork, Diane suspected she was scared and didn't want to go to that side of town at this late hour. Diane insisted on getting them to Jason tomorrow and agreed to deliver a message to Sonny on his behalf. Jason wanted Diane to inform Sonny that he had reclaimed his portion of Corinthos coffee and would be working there from now on. Nina noticed Willow Corinthos and Michael Corinthos were celebrating an early anniversary meal at Metro Court, so she brought some champagne to the table. Nana also stated that she would have the chef make a five-course meal, but Willow reminded Nana that she did not want to see her and assumed Nina would honor her wishes. Nina walked away with the champagne after apologizing and promising to cancel the special supper. Michael got his date with Willow back on track by giving her a costly jewelry that Wiley Corentos chose after his father whittled it down for him. Willow admitted that she was working too much at the hospital and missing out on precious moments that would only happen when the kids were little. Michael proposed that Willow devote herself to charitable work in order to have a more flexible schedule while also giving back. Willow felt pity for Drew Kane when the subject turned to how much his life had altered since Jason returned. At Sonny's penthouse, Ava Jerome tried to turn Christina Corinthos Davis away because her father was sleeping, but she insisted on seeing him. Sonny appeared and was pleased to welcome Christina inside. Christina spoke to Sonny about her confrontation with Jocelyn Jacks and appeared uneasy as Ava brought Sonny a drink of vodka. Christina mentioned Nina's return to Crimson after discussing Blaze, Aka Allison Rogers, Jacqueline Grace Lopez. Deception Contract Sonny wondered why Drew would rehire the woman who had placed him in prison. If Drew was scheming, Ava pointed out that Nina could take care of herself. After Christina left, Sonny inquired whether Ava was aware of Nina's return to Crimson, but did not inform him. Ava insisted she didn't and assumed Nina's phone was hidden beneath everything on her desk, including her divorce papers. Sonny appeared to be about to kiss Ava until Diane interrupted them. Sonny became enraged and fled to the warehouse after Diane informed him that Jason had reclaimed his portion of Corinto's coffee and was moving into the office. When Sonny discovered Jason later, he told him that he did not want him there. Carly answered Drew's phone call and learned about his encounter with the FBI. Drew suggested that Carly let Jason worry about himself while she cared for her girls. On Tuesday's GH episode, Olivia Quartermain appeared and screamed to Carly about all of the issues she was having in her partnership with Nina. Diane's paralegal also showed up with legal paperwork for Jason, so Carly agreed to deliver them and headed to Corinto's Coffee. Carly discovered two men beating someone in her SUV, so she honked and yelled at them until they fled. When Carly approached the man to check on him, she was surprised to learn that the victim was John Jagger Cates. John refused to let Carly phone 911, but she insisted on assisting him into her car and up to his suite at Metro Court. 
Carly also promised to fetch John some painkillers and ice, so he agreed to let her take care of him. When Nina contacted Drew in his office, she pressed him to assist her. If Drew put Nina on Aurora's board of directors, Michael would be forced to work with her, opening the door to the relationship she desired with Willow. Drew wondered what was in it for him, so Nina told out that Carly would believe they were allies, which would drive her insane. Nemet ended up bickering with Drew again, and she grabbed his shirt as he attempted to turn away. Drew eventually discarded the clothing since the buttons had ripped open. Some flirtation ensued as Nina and Drew tested the waters, which resulted in Nina unbuttoning her shirt slightly before Drew kissed her. Drew gave Nina the opportunity to say no, but she gave him the go-ahead as they stripped down for passion on his desk. According to General Hospital spoilers, Nina and Drew's relationship will cause issues, so stay tuned for more predictions on all the turmoil that's brewing. General hospital spoilers and fresh updates for Tuesday, April 9 include a confrontation, a new deal, and an unexpected beatdown. Next on General Hospital. Drew Kane gets into a fight. Jason Morgan works on a new agreement, and John Jagger Cates receives an unexpected beating. General Hospital Spoilers Drew Kane's Confrontation Drew and Nina Reeves Corinthos clash at work because Nina has a different point of view than him. She's definitely attempting to persuade him to change his mind because he wants to know what he'll get out of this. Given that he is her supervisor, the two are looking at each other with somewhat hostile expressions. Nina should feel grateful. Drew reinstated her as editor of Crimson Magazine but he was forced to do so after Carly Spencer, Laura Wright, resigned. Nina is unlikely to forget that she saved Drew's most successful publication. G.H. Spoilers Olivia Quartermain's News Flash Meanwhile, Olivia Quartermain has some news for someone, and if she's referring to her Metro Court partner, Nina is the one. She claims that this is not the only thing she has done without her input. Some could call it an initiative, but Olivia evidently calls it something else, most likely something less attractive. There's a potential she's talking about something going on inside the Quartermain mansion, in which case she could be referring to Tracy Quartermain. General Hospital Spoilers Jason Morgan's New Deal Meanwhile, in Sunny Corinto's office in the Corinto's Coffee Warehouse, Jason is working on a new offer. Diane Miller has visited with him there and informs him that someone behind the scenes has been working in his favor. Jason is taking over the coffee business from Sonny, but Sonny is unaware. Jason informs Diane that it is no longer Sonny's office, but his. Someone has been working in Jason's favor behind the scenes. Jason cannot afford to buy off Sonny. Jason had 40% and Sonny had 60% when it began but both have been presumed dead a few times since. GD Spoilers Sonny Corinthos questions Sonny can't believe it and tells Ava Jerome, Mora West, who watches sympathetically and listens. He discovered that Drew reinstated Nanan at Crimson, most likely from Ava herself, and wonders why Drew would hire the woman who sentenced him to prison. He's probably suspicious that Nina has something on Drew and is holding it over his head as if it's any of Sonny's concern in the first place. Christina Corinthos Davis, Sonny's daughter, is likely to be suspicious of Ava's actions with him because she supports Nina. Jason wants Diane to do more. Back at the Corinthos coffee facility, Jason asks Diane to do something extra for him. Perhaps there is more to his acquisition of the coffee business than meets the eye, and that should be represented in the documentation. Jason couldn't do anything in public since the FBI is using him as bait to draw out pikemen so they can take him down. Perhaps he wants to leave the coffee business to his survivors if he dies, for real this time? Given the circumstances, that appears to be reasonable. Jaggard is lucky that Carly is in the right place at the right moment. Even if he wasn't, he would be getting an unexpected beating in an alley. She's driving her car, most likely returning from Bobby's, and cries, Hey, leave him alone. Two thugs got the jump on Jagger, who clearly wasn't expecting it, 
and he'll be severely beaten. It's a good thing Carly knows first aid, because Jaggard is going to need it. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.